Hey gang, what's good? It's Wes. So just like any good artist, I'm having a uh, grande coffee at 11 p.m. Because <laughs> I'm a madman. Um, no, but uh, wife and baby are in bed. So um, I had a little bit of time and I wanted to record this video. I've been kind of in my own head about what would make a good video. It's not that I'm running out of ideas. It's just making something interesting. You know, that's tricky business. But we found something. My wife and I actually talked about it, and she came up with a good idea. It was like, hey, you make brush packs. Why don't you, like, use one of your own brush packs and make a thing? And you know what? That's a pretty good idea. So that's what we're going to do this time. Um, I'm already in the middle of working on a piece, um, a piece that's actually inspired by the palette of Thomas Kincaid, which we will talk about, trust me. Um, but I wanted to show one of the brush packs and me using one of the brush packs that I sell on my website. So before we get into the painting part of it, I do want to um, bring this over. Let me go to BAM. So yeah, if you head over to my website, um, you know, Art of West Gardener, you go to wesleygardener.com right up here. And then you go to store. Um, and then we actually break these out right here. So tutorials and there's brushes and then there's I sell. Um, it did sell prints for a bit. I don't know if that's even still active, but um, if you go over to brushes, we are gonna be using the Platinum Brush Pack. This is the, the pack we're gonna be using. Um, the whole pack comes with 29 Photoshop brushes. Um, yeah, 16 Paintstorm Studio brushes, which I'll be doing a video on Paintstorm Studio in the future. And then 30 minute tutorial video. So that's gonna show some of what I'm gonna show here, but this video is really going to focus on one using custom brushes anyway but two uh what should you be thinking about and why would you need different brushes there's always that saying about oh you can do any painting in the world with a hard round brush which is true but why is it fun to be able to use these uh, custom brushes but i wanted to show that i'm not completely in shill mode right now so yeah you can get this brush pack um four dollars right now but I have a free brush pack up there that actually has, what, nine, 12 brushes? Let me see. My May Sketch A Day 2020 brush pack um, comes with one, two, three, four, six, seven times three, 21 brushes, completely free. Um, and you can see the actual examples right here. There's some pencil stuff, some chalky stuff. So everything, the same type of brushes that we're gonna be using here, or actually you can get for free. Um, here because we're just going to use a painterly brush, some textured brushes, some hard round brushes, um, and then some smudge tools. And all of these work as a smudge tool as well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, you see a standard brush mode, your mixer brush tool in Photoshop, and then smudge brush. So these actually work in Procreate as well. Now, I don't think all of the options go over to Procreate one-to-one. -one. But I did transfer them. This was the first brush pack that I went in and actually used Procreate on my iPad, brought these brushes in, customized them, and resaved it out as a Procreate brush set or brush pack. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, brush set file. So yeah, you get that totally free. So you don't even have to spend money. I just wanted to show you kind of the type of thing that we're working with. But if you have another favorite artist, if they have a brush pack, if you've already bought one, something like that, you can feel free to follow along because instead of using the exact brushes, I'm going to talk about the intent on why I use them. But let me uh, come back over here. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We are going to be looking at um, a painting. Uh, yeah, I'm going to swap over to this other screen, but I will see you in a minute. All right, so we are here. Yeah, and we actually have our painting up right now. And I wanna show you kind of what we did. So the first three layers I actually did in Art Rage here. Um, Art Rage just runs faster. I'm a big fan of Art Rage Vitae. Um, I like it a lot. And it gives me these nice, um, this is about how my things start, by the way. <laughs> Um, gives you these nice, thick, wet brush strokes. If you look real close, you can see how these colors are kind of mixing and stuff. 
So this is all within ArtRage. How I got these colors down and these smeary like wet brushes and stuff like that. But um yeah, I just wanted to use a color palette that I'm not used to because I, I make a lot of kind of gothic-y stuff, uh, desaturated colors, a lot of grays, browns, stuff like that. Um, and I wanted to use some really vibrant kind of in-your-face colors. Now, I do have uh, Pure Ref as well, which is a thing that you can use to uh, kind of drag and drop images from the web. Um, and I have some Thomas Kincaid paintings here. And, you know, I'm not the biggest Thomas Kincaid fan, but I do think um, his control of color was really interesting. It's a type of color usage that I'm not used to. So I thought it'd be a lot of fun not only to use some of my brushes on this, but to use kind of a problem solving method that I'm not quite used to. So I have to stay sharp during the whole time. So, um, but yeah, I'm looking at these and a lot of the greens and the reds, and you kind of do the, you probably noticed that. The, the background areas are that yellowish color with the, the clouds and, you know, I'm bringing in some of those soft pinks and stuff. So it's been fun so far. Um, I, I am going to have this, uh, these references over to the side. That way we can just look at the whole painting while we work. Um, but I may drag this over from time to time. I have a three monitor set up, but um, sometimes I just use my other monitor to... Uh, Bring this over here. Something I want to talk about. There was an art critic, I can't remember who it was, that talked about every cottage in a Thomas Kincaid painting is so bright on the inside, it looks like it's on fire. <laughs> Which I'm like, now that whenever I heard that, I was like, yeah, that's kind of true. But anyway, we're not going to make a cottage, not in ours. Um, but yeah, let me move this over. And I'm going to turn on some music. I have the volume for the music pretty low. So I'm hoping that it doesn't um, overwhelm my sound here. So this is a little bit more live than what we're used to doing for a YouTube video, but I hope you enjoy the slight change of pace. Let me bring this over. It may even be so quiet that you may not even hear it all that much. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a like negative. 30 decibels. I'll have it kick in for a second. It's the Guild War soundtrack. Love the Guild War soundtrack. All right, so we got that. Um, yeah, I'll keep it right around there. That should be good. Kind of get mood music going. I like to paint while listening to music. So let's talk about the piece so far. I have four active layers right now. This first one was called the color block in. This is where I just picked color, got a big flat brush, big wet brush, and kind of smudged in a bunch of stuff. I know I know I want trees. I know I want kind of a, a in shadow walkway um, kind of going into the light. So you see the darker blues and my cools while the really light um, warms are in the background. So I like to do the warm and cool thing. Um, and then I did what I call like a structure pass, which is where I took the shapes of what I'm looking at right here. And I'm like, okay, what does this look like to me? And went and kind of defined them. Um, so this was using a smaller brush and then I would just go and pick from the colors that I had here. Cause you can see like right here, right here, how these are really thick and then do structure pass you can still see some of those strokes but then other ones as I come back over they kind of get really thick but smaller and once again these are all in art rage then I did a highlight pass so I kept this exactly where it was and then I just brought in some highlights on lighten mode so I would color select the area like let's say the grass was catching some of the light um, I would I would color select. See, I would color select here like this, and then I would take my uh, hue saturation slider and I would desaturate it a little bit and then lighten the value. 
so I'd bring it closer to gray and then push it up to make it lighter. Um, so for really quick rundown, um, I really like using this sort of color um, wheel. I also will use the color wheel from time to time. It just depends on what mood I'm in. But for this, we're going to use the hue cube. So basically, as you go left to right, um, the leftmost side of this is going to be your less saturation. So less intensity or vibrancy of a color. Then you go to the right. As you go further to the right, you're going to have more intensity. Then up top, you're going to have your lightest value or your brightest brights of that. Um, and then as you go down, you're going to lower that brightness, meaning that that's going to get darker and darker as you go down. So up and down is value. Across is your saturation. And then um, here is where you actually pick the hue of what, what pigment do you want to pick. Um, and as you can see, you can just kind of slide this up and down. Then if I, let's say I needed a very dark, um, let's say we're like right here and I needed a very, very dark cyan color. I could just come over, I could drag cyan down, I could get this, I wanted it pretty saturated, so I'm gonna drag it this way and then pretty dark, so I'm right here. And then, um, like, uh, you know, it's a little too dark right now, but we might be using something like that here in a minute. Um, yeah, so once again, quick just color pass. So I'll try to be explaining what I'm using and why I'm picking certain colors. But, um, yeah, so I did that for, let me hide that. So I did that for the highlights, then for the darks, I kind of did the same thing. I just did a normal layer over that and kind of brought that in. So starting from the beginning, we started with our basic block in of color smudging. Then we kind of refined those shapes a little bit. Then we added our highlights. Then we added some shadows and a little bit more like twigs and stuff like that. And that's kind of where we're going to start here. So this is my platinum brush pack. Um, we have some hard round brushes right here. We have our flat brushes. These are going to be very handy. We'll have one that's a standard flat brush and then one that's a textured brush um, that also just keeps the same shape, but it has some like smudgy stuff near the bottom. It's pretty cool. Um, one of my favorite brushes in this is the flat textured. I call it my platinum brush. This is actually the namesake of the whole brush pack. I love this brush so, so much. I want to name the whole brush pack after it. And then we have some soft round brushes. We'll do that for some stuff at the end with a light kind of coming through the trees. Um, your airbrushes. I modified some Greg Rutkowski brushes. I'm a big fan of Greg Rutkowski, and he has some of the best oil painterly brushes for Photoshop I've ever seen. So the, I actually named them after him. So G Rutkowski 2 and G Rutkowski 1. And then some oil brushes. Um, now, a few of these I actually took with a piece of paper. I, I, did, I did black paint, black oil paint, got some liquid, did all that stuff way back when. Took a picture of it, brought it into Photoshop, made the custom brush, we're good to go. So these will feel like oil paints, hopefully. Um, and then circle oil. Um, oil and water mix is really cool because it mixes your foreground and your background colors based on the intensity of your brush stroke. So very, very cool. Um, we can do some cool stuff with that. Then a canvas texture brush. We're going to use this near the end probably to put some like canvas looks to it, just little stamps of canvas stuff, maybe on a different color mode. Um, let me actually move my webcam right there so you can see this full list. Um, chalk brush, just great squarish um, dry brush for good textures and stuff. A splatter, which is actually how I did. This splatter brush is actually how I did a lot of these. Uh, by, yeah, so you can see right here, then with the lighten layer, there the highlight layer. I used that splatter brush and it splattered in a whole bunch of stuff, but to the eye it looks like light come through the trees or the leaves or whatever. Um, very impressionistic, but you know, that's kind of my jam. And then uh, I actually did the same thing a little bit on the darks, as you can see kind of back here. Um, so we have the splatter, but then I have a collection of smudge brushes. I usually change the mode, so right now I'm in the standard brush mode in Photoshop. Um, but sometimes whenever I come like down here to the smudge tool, I'll actually come and select my smudge tool here. You can see how it was selected before. I can uh, pick that. 
and then whenever I come I can start smudging. We're going to do that near the end, but right now I want to keep blocking in my shapes and really start bringing some clarity. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my... Let's start with using this flat textured platinum brush. Um, and what you're going to see, let me come up here. I'm going to color pick. Um, here we go. Okay. And see basically what you're going to notice. And by the way, to pick a color from your canvas in Photoshop and a lot of other programs, you'll hit the alt button and you see how it becomes the color selector. So I'm going to select that color. So this brush, based on the amount of pressure you put on, you can make something that's very opaque like this. Or if you do a light touch, you can see how it's a little grainier. We're going to use that to define some of our shapes. Okay, so let me delete that layer. Make a new one. Go ahead and save this. So yeah, let's um let's deal with some of these. I want these to be kind of steps coming up, I think. Like the little rocks and stuff looks pretty good. So if we want to color pick that and then use this brush. There we go. And this will just be very loosey-goosey from imagination type stuff. Um, we have the Thomas Kincaid paintings over on the other tab, but I'm not using those as a reference in regards to topic. I just want them in regards to how he's using color because we're going to just refine some of these shapes right here and then we'll come back in with some more color and do some kind of crazy stuff here momentarily. So like I like that light hitting like this and you know what I mean? Like that's a cool look. I like that look of that kind of lightish brown or something. Almost like the dirt. Something like that. And actually for these kind of stairs, let's do flat textured. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to bring that. And then drag down. Yeah, see it has this really cool like paint look. But it's still impressionistic enough. That's cool. Let's give a little something, you know, because this is very, I want this to be very impressionistic anyway. So having some stray brush strokes here and there might actually work better for us. Um, then you'll notice as I'm getting closer to the viewer, I'm actually darkening up my values. I'm getting darker um, in regards to that stuff. So let's do that. This feels very much like a kind of a Bob Ross paint along, which is fine with me, man. I like this. I can do this type of stuff all the time. Oh, <laughs> oh, I think my baby's crying. Hold on. All right. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> Little man's having, he just hit four months old. So he's having his sleep regression right now. So let's jump back in. Um, Let me get music started okay cool so where were we we where is my where did it go I do not know oh there it is I rolled that way okay anyway so we oh we we're doing the flat texture kind of doing these impressionistic marks front here let me move webcam and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller hopefully help that out a little bit all right so a few more of these flat textures I'm 
But the thing I don't want to get rid of is a lot of these nice blends of color that we have from, um, cause see how that kind of comes on really opaque. I actually don't want to get rid of these nice blends of color that um, Art Rage brought to us. So I'm going to use one of these oil brushes, make it a little smaller. Cause the nice thing about these, if you look, there's a lot of separation between the bristles. So if I were to come in and do that, you see how there's like softer edges near the end of these shapes. What that actually means is whenever you bring this down and you start picking colors around other colors and kind of smudging them in like this, they're going to do some really nice blend work automatically depending on how much pressure you put down. So see how it's almost like it's nice because it feels like an oil brush with liquid on it. And that's a really good sensation. This is the oil one, but any of these oils, the oil one through five, um, they all have that type of stroke feel. Um, so you can kind of come in and then just sort of carve in. And it sort of even softens a lot of those transitions, you see, which is kind of nice. Just go in and do some scraggly, like if I need to get rid of some of these, maybe bring in some lights. You know what I mean? But still keep an interesting looking brush or strokes. That's a good way to do that. You know, that's actually how I would come in and do some of these that you see right here. Just use this oil type brush and kind of carve out things. And you can also color pick and add and stuff like that. But, uh, oh, get something darker there. There we go. Really brings out that kind of impressionistic, you know, feel. But, uh, we have that. I like that this color doesn't make much sense, but I kind of like it, so I'm going to keep it. <laughs> but it's about finding the best way to integrate it. I could... Do the, yeah, let me do the textured platinum. Bring this, make it big, and do a soft, something like that. Bring in some of the, the texture, you know, very lightly. And then I can come with the Greg Rukowski brushes. And you'll see there's kind of a, sporadic nature to the brushes but that's good because that's gonna make it look more like a traditional painting um you know see how like some of these are pretty harsh but then i can come back here and just pick some of these colors and then you can always come back and refine so let's say one of these corners to be really abstract kind of brush stuff here. Um, so that way, whenever you zoom out, it looks right, but then you zoom in and it's just kind of a, a mess. I'm, you know, kind of inside baseball stuff right now, but I am trying to look to get hired on at ArenaNet, um, which is where um, a lot of my favorite artists have worked and they have a very painterly texture painted style like that so that's that's a reason why i like using these type of brushes is it easily gives you that look so like if we were to come over here let's pick that you know and it can be kind of overbearing but it's random you see what i mean it's random so that's Part of the appeal, part of the fun, I think, is the chaos of real paint um, kind of coming on our canvas right here. Something like that. And then you bring maybe a flat texture brush and then redefine. 
some of this. that like walkway edge. I'm a pretty big fan of one point perspective landscapes. I think they're really cool to do because you're not so up in your head about making sure that everything's correct perspectively. Like I think you can make more interesting art doing two or three point perspective, but I think you can still make good looking art, you know, um, good looking art one point perspective. You know, the stuff you learn in grade school. Just make a little horizon line, vanishing point, and make sure everything points to that vanishing point. Gonna do that. So right now, I'm just not even really thinking about where I'm putting brush strokes. I'm just coming in with a textured brush, that flat textured, and just sort of adding some noise, color picking. If I'm seeing, you know, angles and ridges and stuff, I'm just using that brush to sort of bring more of them out. Um, a little bit later, we can worry about more refinement. Um, let me actually get this and then cover these because those are pretty intense marks. You see and basically what that is that's the multiply layer the brush strokes from art rage makes it look really cut into you know what i mean like right here especially so my job is to kind of come over here color pick to make that shape work a little better bring in some of these and this is also a real good time like here, we could actually get some of these. Bring up those moves up here. We can do that. We can get the hard round wet brush. This is actually my favorite hard round brush is a wet brush because it has a, a softer tail um, to kind of show what that means. Let me get over here. You see how it does that subtle fade, the opacity fade near the end right there? Um, based on how the brush stroke looks and how much pressure you put down, you can get different results. Um, this wet round brush is actually part of the free brush pack as well. So if you want to use that, feel free. Um, so I'm just going to color pick and then just based on the control of my hand, I can like soften or harshen up an edge. You know, I just like having that flexibility in one brush. I think it's a lot of fun to be able to do that. See, that makes a weird tangent, though. I don't like the fact that those trees connect. So if I were to come over here, like I said, you can do entire paintings with a hard round brush. I've done it, you know. Um, I'm actually doing it more and more just to try to get away from the crux of using texture brushes to uh, render out stuff, even though I love it. You know, it's good to push yourself and get out of your own comfort zone. But let's talk about that for a minute. So, are brushes important? You know, I think we've had that video on the channel before, but I think they are important, not because they're gonna make you a better painter or whatever, I think they're important because they make painting, to me, more fun. There's more weird things that can happen. There's more energy that you can get. You can learn different tricks and, you know, mimic stuff you might do traditionally on a digital canvas or something like that. Like, it gives you more options, and I think more options is always a good thing. So in that way, I think brushes are important. I think having brushes you like using, because if you like using them, you're going to use them, which means you're painting more, which means you're going to get better. So these things lead into each other pretty well, in my opinion. 
Um, so actually, let me bring in the Thomas Kincaid stuff real quick. Let me... Where am I at? We are right here. So something you already notice, if you look at both of these kind of side by side, I like the colors and stuff that we have so far, but something that you're going to notice, if I come in, let me move this mode always on top. If I come in, and if I go to canvas grayscale, you're going to see some really dark darks in the Thomas Kincaid stuff. His shadows are almost pitch black. Now, I will say we're on the computer, so taking a photograph and trying to like, basically they took a digital photograph of one of his pictures or one of his paintings, and then they probably crunched the values a little bit. So it may be a little bit more black in the value range here digitally than what it really is, like if you see it with your own eyes. Um, but just know that this is very dark, very dark. And if we do the same thing here, um, so if we have my painting right here, I'm going to make a new layer. Um, new layer. I'm going to fill it with black, with pure black. So go in, fill it with pure black. And then I'm going to change the, the blending mode up here where it says normal. I'm going to click and I'm going to go to color. Look at the difference there. I have no real dark darks in my painting yet. I have a lot of midtones. In fact, I would say my entire painting is a midtone. Um, I might have some whites right over here, but um, oh, and then my scroll wheel is not working anymore. Good old Photoshop glitching out. Um, see, it is over here on Pure Ref. Oh, well, there it goes. Um, but a lot of the dark darks, so see how like there's ambient occluded shadows, like the light's not hitting here, so we made it really dark. I can kind of come in here and do that same thing. Um, I'm going to pick just a more saturated version and a darker version of the color that I already have, but we want to start introducing those dark darks, because I think that's really what makes a Kincaid. I think he has such an insane value range. He goes from very dark dark to very light light on every single one of his paintings. Um, so if we want to mimic that, I think we have to do that. We already have our light lights. Well, we're good on the lights. Now we have to crunch in some dark, dark. I mean, look at these. Like, that's almost black yet again. And, like, the details here. And that's crazy, man. Um, but whenever people talk about how he's a master of light, um, I think he would be... Light's one thing, but I think value does a lot of that you know anyway but yeah look at this that's crazy right here i don't think we're gonna get that dark like that much of that dark but i think up here we can kind of get away with it so the best way to do that let me go ahead i'm gonna move let me bring this back and see how now the colors pop it still works black and white but then the colors really do add something to it let me move that over so we got that right there and the nice thing is having this I'm going to call this layer value. Um, I'm just always going to keep it on top. That way I can check at any time if my values are working. So I like the fact that I have some darker stuff right here up front. Let's darken it even more. Let's actually start adding in some, uh, some really dark stuff. Let me grab a good oil brush. No, let me add the chalk brush. Yes. And then I'm going to come over here. So I'm going to grab this color. And then I always use the rule that the more in shadow something is, the more saturated the color gets, which is probably not accurate. Well, I know it's not accurate 100% of the time because nothing in art is accurate 100% of the time. But for right now, It'll be a safe bet. We have a lot of color. We want to keep a lot of color. We don't want to add white. We don't want to add black. We want to add more saturated darks and more saturated lights. Um, or actually, I should say the lights will be desaturated. So as you get brighter, you get closer to gray. As you get darker, you get more pigment in there. And that's really going to pop 
um, some of this stuff. So we were, let's say, let me color pick that. We were right up here. I want to saturate, so I'm going to move to the right, and then I'm going to move down to get ourselves a dark. And then... We have something like this. So we start bringing these in, right? Very neat looking stuff. And the same thing for the green. So now this doesn't look right coming over the greens. So I'm going to pick the green. Oh, and see, that's actually kind of a blue, kind of off blue. Um, so I'm going to pick the green. I'm going to saturate it and I'm going to darken it. And then I'm going to come up front here and kind of mark in some of these just scribbles. You see what I mean? And already it's starting to work. It's starting to give a bigger sense of depth if we scroll out. You know what I mean? There's just more, there's more to it now. Um, the same thing here. And now you can see those darks really start popping start making the background look brighter. So let's keep going. Keep doing that, you know. And something you're going to notice is I don't do the undo button a lot. I don't really use it. I just like to paint over what I have. I think it's a cooler way to go and plus it gives me more practice painting. You know what I mean? Instead of hitting undos and worrying about layers and stuff, I just sort of come in and want to straighten that out a little bit. Like that's catching the light, so got that one. Here we go. So yeah, something like this. Maybe bring that ridge in. That ridge in like that. And you, you notice how I stay pretty zoomed out. I'm not really worried about the nitty gritty of the uh, details right now. I'm just not interested in them at this point. Um, I just need to make sure that this reads okay as a painting. So we're going to do the same thing here. Um, let me pick that same green. And this. Get the Greg Burkowski brush. Maybe bring that up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Let me bring that. The same thing there. There we go. So you're starting to bring in a little bit more of that dimensionality whenever you start working with your values that way. So, yeah, I'm very big on values. I think value does, I mean, I say this to my students a lot, but uh, value does the work, color gets the credit. And that's always going to be true. Um, so as long as the, the image starts looking good in black and white, you're going to have a safe bet as far as a piece goes. And good rule of thumb, as something's closer to you or closer to the viewer, it, it will be darker just by the nature of it it will be darker um you're going your eyes notice more detail and it notices things like form and form is made from going from light to dark so you're going to notice transitions more because it's in focus it's closer to your eyeball you can focus on it if it's further back you're going to notice that a lot of these background values are very close to each other if i color pick that that's pretty up there that that's pretty up there that that's pretty up there let's get one of the purples here purple pretty up there you see what i mean it's close to gray and it's brighter so it's it's closer to the top of the hue and it's also closer to the grays a lot of beautiful color lives in the grays i think because you can get away with a lot. You can get away with a lot of shapes. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, let me grab the oil four brush. I'm gonna grab this and see, let's say I wanted to do that and I could just change the hue. I could just come over here and change this to be like a yellow. And those play well together because the values are the same. You see what I mean? So 
something to keep in mind. If your if your values are right and they're they're very close to each other, you can get away with murder. Um, as far as color goes, and it will look good. Yeah, that's the oil brush I want. Oil too. There's my good friend. And I'm just kind of color picking around. It's funny. If these were really dark and saturated, this would remind me of Fruity Pebbles. The cereal. Because of how many different colors. I have greens, I have purples. Um, it's not subtle in the least. In the least, it's not subtle. But neither was Kincaid. Kincaid was not subtle, man. He would hit you over the face with it. Um, let me hide some of those big, thick brush strokes right there. Because once again, it's in the background. It's going to be kind of blended in. And in fact, if we really want to sell that, which we do, really want to sell that we can get our smudge tool yeah look at that those are crazy I need to come in and refine some of this but that's fine um we can get that smudge tool boom I need smudge tool wet oil edges here we go so I'm gonna select all Edit, copy to a merged layer, which means everything visible is going to be um, in the new layer. And then I'm going to, I copy merged, and then I'm going to hit paste. You notice it makes a brand new layer right here. Um, and it's a layer that if I turn it off and on, it doesn't look any different. But the reason why I want this layer with all the colors and the brush strokes and all that is when I smudge it, I want it to take all that information. You can do the same thing if you make a new layer, if you just want your smudges on their own layer, you can make a new layer above your art, um, a new transparent layer. And with your smudge tool, have sample all layers selected. Now, this takes a little bit more system resources because what the smudge tool is doing at that point is it's reading every layer you have underneath it. Um, underneath the layer you're working on, I should say. So if you're a type of artist that has 400 layers and you put sample all layers for your smudge tool, don't be surprised if it starts kind of churning your CPU or making your computer lag a little bit. Um, which is why what I like to do is I like to make a merged layer of everything. And in the smudge tool, I actually disable sample all layers. So all it has to do is stay on the one layer that has all the information on it anyway. That makes sense. It's less math for the program to crunch and as we saw with the zoom wheel, my Photoshop is all kinds of jacked up. So, <laughs> so we have this. So if we want to get some wet edges here, um, we have that. We have the 99 strength. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, come on. See what I mean? Like crazy stuff. Okay. Yes. Now, if we zoom way in, I want you to see what this does. See this area right here? I'm going to take my smudge tool. And to smudge some of these out. You see what I mean? So it does some really interesting stuff there. Now, by itself, that doesn't look great just because it's that. But if you zoom out, it starts working because we're not focused on this back here. This is not our focal point back here. So I can actually come back and use this smudge tool, any of them really, but I like the wet oil edges. You can also do the painterly edges. Um, it has some really cool stuff. And then just sort of sketch around a little. And what you're gonna get is um, the nice kind of in Katie smeary look where a lot of these colors just start running together and 
if I bring up the Kincaid stuff here in a second, I will show you where he does this. But basically how this is all kind of a dreamscape at that point, you zoom out and look now, it recedes very well into the background. Um, here's kind of a before and after. So it's not a huge change, but it's just enough. So if I were to bring over the Kincaid stuff, if you look back here, look at that. Like that's all just, that's a jumbled mess of value. Even the bird, you know what I mean? Um, same thing here. If you look back here, look at the clouds. Clouds are a big one. If you want to use a smudge tool to its maximum efficiency, use it on clouds. Um, because you can see how these colors just sort of blend in. Um, you can do some highlights and lowlights and just sort of smear some of the edges. Not all of the edges. You don't want to do it everywhere. But just select some of the edges and you're going to be surprised at how, you know, how well that effect works. Um, and what's cool is let's say we wanted to bring in... Let's say I want the canvas texture now, as I noticed whenever we were looking at the Kincaid stuff, you can kind of see this texture work right here. Let's say I want to bring that canvas texture in. Um, I am going to go new layer, color dodge, canvas texture. I'm going to select one of the brighter colors. And this is going to be garish at first. And we're going to bring this white in there, see? And then I'm going to select the yellow, select orange, very garish looking, you know, very, very garish. Because if you look at it now, that's just gross, right? But what you do, it's on color dodge, bring this down to about 20%. Maybe even 14%, maybe even less. Um, yeah, right around 20%. If you look at it now, it gives that kind of linen feel. Like if you look at this area right here, it's kind of weird anyway, but you're putting that canvas pattern on there. I don't know. It gives a little bit of a bite. I don't know if that's what we want yet, but just know it's a good finisher. This is a good finishing brush. It's it's something that you can get a lot of mileage out of based on how you want to use it. Um, yeah, just kind of a basic deal right there. Um, anyway, let's come back to our merged layer. And then we're going to work on our smudge tool again, uh, wet oil edges. We're going to smudge these around. Here. So you only want to do this to stuff that you think is going to be in the background. Stuff that you don't want. Actually, let me get rid of one of my oil too. Get rid of that. I don't know what this big thing is right here. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, bring these. Bring that. Cool. Kind of give ourselves some focal points here. But yeah, only the stuff in the background do you want to do that smudge stuff to. Um, you can do it to a few things in the foreground, but keep it keep it subdued um what i'm gonna do here i have this oil brush i'm just gonna come in and start refining some of these foliage shapes just to give the eye something neat to look at smooth it 
See, these oil brushes are really nice and smooth. But if you want to get those really kind of harsh edges, the flat brush is really good for that. You can just get the flat brush. Let's say select this. And you see that? That's a very direct, very intense, opaque brush. Once again, I'm just kind of following these lines of um, the tree. Just sort of bring it up. It doesn't look like much right now, but then you take like the wet round brush. You come in here and you get some of these darker darks. And then you almost do like a, a wavy sort of thing. You start noticing kind of craggy shapes and this would be a perfect reason to bring up reference of a tree um, but I'm just doing almost like the tree limb type thing you know just kind of the wet brushwork right there then as you start connecting some of these lines together you start getting a really cool sense of uh, the shape of the tree. Let me get rid of it, actually. Yeah, there we go. I like how some of this looks like bark that is either catching light or catching shadow or so I'm gonna integrate some of that in down here. But yeah, custom brushes are cool. I like using them. Um, feel free to make your own brush. That's a great way to kind of learn the in and out of your paint program of choice is if they allow you to make your own custom brushes, um, read up on a tutorial or something like that and, and try your best to make a brush that you would want to use. Um, Cause it's the same thing as like going to the store and buying brushes and then like using scissors to snip away at the bristles. I know some people would freak out and horror hearing that I've done that before, but yeah, I've, I've done it. If I have a nice flat, but I want to make it a dagger, um, you can get razor blade and just, you know, um, so it's the same thing. Um, you're, you're figuring out the tool set that works the best for you, but see how we're doing this. We get that wet round brush and this is what I would consider comparatively to the rest of the stuff in the image, high render which is still not very high render. Um, it's funny, one of the topics I was going to talk about, but it seemed a little self-serving, was I'm in the weird phase of early in my art career right now to where I don't know what style of painting I want to do as a job. Like, my main thing right now is I just want to get hired. I want to get hired somewhere um, whether for freelance stuff, which I am doing right now, but I want to have a constant supply and I mean a constant supply like no days off supply of clients However, right now I'm kind of in between jobs So now uh, what that means is I have a ton of time um, Well, I don't really with a four-month-old, but you know what I mean? Like I have a lot of time to think about painting and like oh no am I doing the wrong style is the reason why I'm not getting work all the time because you know, my painting's not as effective as it could be. Do I need to just really train in a different style? And what am I doing? And you, you get really up in your head. And it's a mix of uh, imposter syndrome. Maybe like, oh no, am I not good enough anymore? And, uh, you know, uh, you start worrying about that. But then you also start worrying about um, what if the stuff you like making is not the stuff that makes money? And that's a scary one. You know what I mean? Like. Because here's the deal, if you're a hobbyist artist, um, you're just kind of going, doing the weekend warrior thing, you like to work on stuff on the side, but you already have a gig and things like that, you don't need to necessarily worry about if your stuff is going to sell or not. But, you know, I'm a family man, um, we got a mortgage and I got to pay bills. So at a certain level, I have to make money. I love painting and I love working with the clients that I've worked with and I hope to work with them forever. But 
you know, what happens when even they don't need artists at the moment, you know, which is actually happening right now with a few of my clients. They don't need artists. Not right now. They might in the future, and I'm on their list, which is awesome. But, like, how do I expand? How do I branch out? And that is kind of the million-dollar question, you know. But, anyway, so we're talking about different styles, and, like, take a quick break right here. Um, that little highlight on the tree trunk doesn't make sense, but it's just trippy enough that I think it might work. Um, let me save. So to show you the other type of thing, um, like this is a sketch from earlier today. In fact, I don't think anyone else has seen it. I haven't posted it online yet. But like, very rough, very loose. You can see I did all this in Art Rage, the thick brush strokes and stuff like that. Um, Oops. Um, but like, I love this type of stuff. I love the fantasy of it. The, you know what I mean? Like, that's just so gross and messy, but I think it looks rad. Like, I love the look of that, but like, would anybody buy this? Like, would, would, would an art director want this on their project? Who knows? So then you come back to the whole like impressionist versus rendered stuff. So I like rendering things okay, I think it's relaxing, but I don't think I'm great at it. I think I'm too antsy when it comes to um, when it comes to that type of thing. And see, these would be darker because they're facing us and they're away from the light, the main light source, which is back here. So we can get really dark in some of these to really start bringing in and see this is still with a hard round brush or with the wet round I should say what we're gonna do here and then and this goes back to the Kincaidiness of it all um I'm gonna blend these in together and you know it's it's one of those things that at the end of the day, you just need to paint what you like, you know, paint what you want to see, paint what speaks to you and all that stuff. But whenever you do it for a career and you want to get the attention of art directors or a specific client or something like that, that's when this stuff gets a little trickier, um, in my opinion, at least. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm just in my head too much, which is not surprising in the least. Um... Um, but yeah, me and my, one of my good friends, um, were talking and we basically said like, well, you know, a pro NFL player doesn't get signed on to an NFL team to play every position on the team. You know what I mean? They don't, they, the kicker is not also your defensive lineman, which is not also your center, which is not also your tight end or quarterback. Like you're a specialist. So maybe get good at one thing, or maybe get great at one thing, and then the jobs will come to you. Um, I, I do like the, you know, and in my art advice video, I gave the advice of be so good they can't ignore you. And I, I still think that's true. But once again, once you get in your own head, that's easier said than done. Um, so get good at what? Be so good at what that they can't ignore you. And that's where I'm at right now. Should I highly render some of this stuff? Should I really focus on the impressionistic brushwork? Um, I think the impressionistic brushwork's more fun. I, I think that's more interesting. Um, it's more fun to look at. Um, one of my artist friends said that um, the impressionist stuff is it's just it has more character. Um, it has more kind of emotion in it. And I guess at the end of the day, that's what we're doing, aren't we? Um, we are emotion artists. So, see, that's not great, but, meh. <laughs> um, but, on the flip side, okay, let's say we have that hard, wet, round, the hard, round, wet brush. Let's say we wanted to take the same idea and do tree bark, but then make it a little more chaotic. If I go in and I get my chalk brush... And then I start grabbing here's some darks. Let me make a 
It's a little bigger. And then let me grab some lights. Grab some more darks. Grab some more lights. Some darks. So which one's more interesting? You know what I mean? Like, um, I think that probably looks more like tree bark. And that's just, hey, let's take a square texture brush and <laughs> throw some stuff up there, you know? Um, so maybe that is part of it. And then as that gets further away, I'm going to more saturation and darken it. That might be a little much, but because we still have to remember it can't be too dark because that tree is actually away from us. And we don't want those values to be darker than the values we have down here. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to keep these, but I'm going to lighten it and keep the saturation up. But I am going to lighten the value um, to kind of bring those down a little bit. You know, just kind of built in some of these. Cool. Cut that. Okay. So, once again, check those values. Yeah, the values are working okay. I want to really get with some of these trees right here. I think what we're going to do so this is a fun little trick on the value I'm actually going to keep the value slider or the value layer on but I'm going to keep my active layer to be the layer um, this should work by the way I don't know but it should work um, the active layer is going to be the layer that has all the color and stuff, or merged layer. So I think if I color pick. Oh no, never mind. Or wait, let me go to the color picker tool here. Eyedropper tool. Okay, where it says up here sample all layers. Just do current layer. Okay. Current below, no adjustments, all layers, current and below, and then current layer. Let's just do current layer. Because then I think I'm going to come back to the, uh, kind of my brush tool. But then if I hit the Alt button, oh, not the Windows key. I do that all the time, by the way, at the Windows key in it mess this stuff up. Um, if I hit the alt button, okay, good. Yes, now you notice that it's also picking colors. It's getting some colors because I'm only picking from this layer. So now we're going to paint in values, meaning I'm going to grab my chalk brush here. I'm going to color pick the value and I'm going to paint around like this. A fun little... Let's make more interesting shapes for these trees. And then what you're going to notice is as we have this, we have some of these. Actually, do that and then darken that. It's a little too dark, so let's get that and let's lighten it a little. 
So once again, we don't want those to be battling the values down here. So it's a little darker, it's fine. Once again, we'll do a little darker right here. I'm gonna make some shadows in these. And then if we turn off our value, you can see that it still works, but it's now very kind of smudgy. You can see our brush strokes because we were just color selecting from there. So it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting way that you can get some cool colors without really knowing even what you're picking. Um, just kind of alt color dropping, you know, alt clicking keeping that eyedropper tool to be the current layer only. And yeah, you can do some cool stuff. Um, yeah, the thing about my platinum brush pack is it doesn't have any what I call gimmick brushes. So there's no like, oh, leaf brushes or foliage brushes or um, something like that. So it doesn't have that stuff. So you're just painting everything which I like, I like that, but it is kind of nice sometimes to have those uh, specific gimmick brushes to make like trees a little more, um, a little easier to paint. You know what I mean? It is, it is what it is. So I'm bringing in more of these. And something to keep in mind while you're working on a landscape like this, keep the planes separated. So like, I would say the foreground would be this area, the stairs, the this part. Your midground is going to be like get a lasso tool. Let me draw what I think the foreground would be. So you have that. It's kind of back here and then you can kind of get this brush. So this would be your mid-ground, like this tree, some of the bushes back behind here, some of this right here, and then your background, of course, would be everything behind that. So think of your image and like make it a 3D view. Like what would this look like if you were hovering over this forest and like this tree is closer to us. This tree is arguably even closer depending on where it is on the perspective which means I need to darken these values a little more um, if I want it to really read correctly based on how the plane is right here. So like we would be zigzagging back and forth between the trees. Like this is the closest tree right here. Then it goes to this tree. Then maybe this tree right back here would be the next one in line. Then way over here. Then you have like way over here and then you start getting into your background trees, which those start pushing back quite a bit. But if we want to get this tree looking as good as we can, we can select these same dark values. Which also means. That we need to darken up some of these values too since these are closer, you see what I mean? So we need to start like, it's a little too dark, but we can start getting closer to that black. You know, maybe I don't like that sort of shape, but you know what I mean? We can start just pushing in those values a little bit. Start darkening that. Get some of these to be real dark. Yeah. 
that if we make these small, you're going to notice little crags and pebbles and stuff like that as you get closer because our eye is going to be more focused on the detail. I'm just kind of drawing random lines. These don't really mean anything, but maybe they can allow me to see some shapes. Maybe do something like that. And then maybe I can use those as forms. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we have something like that. So now let's say we really like how a few of these things look. That one right here, we have that one. Now we can utilize, you know, how that light is hitting from here. We can grab that same light, make it even lighter. Let's get our brush. I want. Let's do a circle oil brush. We haven't used that one yet. And then we're going to come in. And you see how like this light is catching and these look like stairs. I'm going to do that here as well. And like really bring in these shapes to make it look like the light is catching on that stuff. And then as you zoom out, see it looks like little lips. The little lip of the dirt is coming up to catch that. And then the same thing here, like this would be caught right here. Probably not that extreme, um, but you know what I mean? Like those are being brought in and you can do this and you can lighten it. You can keep it saturated in the color and bring that in. Almost like these things are getting that as well, that nice blue color, which makes it kind of look like water, but it's not water. I thought of this as more of like a con not concrete, but like a rocky sort of deal. Um, I want to color pick some of these, color pick some of that, bring that in. Let me grab the background color and start sprinkling that closer in. Because remember, as you get further back, things are going to start taking more of the color of the background itself. That's what atmospheric perspective is. It's going to start getting that desaturated color. I'm gonna start getting that yellow right here for the highlights. See that? And see how we're just kind of doing this. This is with the circle oil brush because it gives us a little bit fun leeway time there. And then I can make these a little more pronounced. The tree's a little more solid. Also bring in some of this. Yeah, it looks kind of off. Um, actually, that looks kind of off too. But we can really start getting in here, and making some cool looking. shapes, you know, yeah, we're going to come in and add some darks because the trees are actually blocking where this light would hit, meaning we would see the image of some, some of that grass being darker because it's in the shadow. You know what I mean? So, 
if something like this. Um, might be a little too dark, but that's fine. Like I said, I don't use the Undual tool. I just kind of come and paint over stuff. Um, you know, this is just me adding little tiny strokes of stuff. Same thing here. I'm just kind of adding that through and through. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm digging it. I like kind of where it's going. Um, if we wanted to really get some of these that are being caught, you can pick the color of your background if you're doing grass this way. And then just come in and really sprinkle in some stuff. You can also do, this is where like a small, small texture brush would do really, really well. Um, kind of that fine point stuff you know maybe sharp lines maybe a few of these in the bushes right here so really when I pick brushes that I'm using to solve a certain problem I'm thinking of if I want the, the, the colors or the texture or whatever to blend in or stand out. So if I want it to stand out, let's say I have a bunch of smudged stuff back here in the background, that's when I'm gonna pick a really high opacity, thick texture brush. So each one of those textures really pops. However, if I wanna keep stuff relatively similar, um, like a texture brush on a texture brush, is actually going to wash both textures out. It's going to get rid of the the spontaneity of each texture because you're going to stack, be stacking information on top of information until you just have like a mush, which is fine, especially if you want to blend stuff together. But like, see how this doesn't read super well? It's nice and impressionistic and whatever. And if you zoom out, oh, that's cool. And look at the grass. But like. If you really want to drive this home, this is where you're going to get the hard round brush. You're going to start color picking and really start carving in. See what I mean? Specific. Non textured. And for each one of these that you do it's going to get more attention. Like, see what I mean? If I come up here, I do that. Let's say I do that one. Um, let's say I do one here, do one there. Um, and yeah, I can do like one of the really, really dark ones. Sorry, my eyes are itching because of uh, Texas allergies right now. So, we have something like this. You can come in and really carve in. There. One of those blades. Really carve in one of those blades. We'll come over here. We'll really carve in one of those blades. Make it super sharp. And the same thing here. Same thing here. And then we'll get even darker. Do something like that. Um, and then as you zoom out, now your brain starts putting these pieces together. You see these really highly rendered or I should say like very clean, sharp, precise um, blades of grass, then you're gonna, your brain's gonna fill in the rest. You're gonna realize, oh, this is here. That means all of these are blades of grass. Tom, in my eye, let me, I'm gonna use an eye drop real quick. Let me, let me uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, do that. Okay, <laughs> I'm still here. I just need to, 
Oh, man. Man, I tell you what, dude. Texas allergies are no joke. Oh. Here, let me use this. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, my gosh. That's what I get for having coffee and uh, all this stuff at, you know, 12.30 in the morning. So, we're, we're starting to get there. You know what I mean? So, that may be... Hmm. What else do I want to do? Let me bring over the Thomas Kincaid stuff again. What should I do to really... See, it looks like he has a very... Maybe that's what I can do. Let me go ahead and put in some of these type of flowers. Um, so I can use kind of that red. I can even bring in another red. So those are good. Maybe, yeah, maybe I can do the red kind of down here. And then what I'll do, this is the great thing about Pure Ref, is since it's always on top now, um, if you right click on it, and this is free, by the way, if you go to pureref.org, Dot com, one of those. Um, I have always on top right there, and that means I can be moving around and stuff, and this stays on top. So I'm actually going to kind of mimic this. And here's another quick crash course on picking the right color. So with Pure F, you can't just color pick. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do some mental math. Look at this color and hue and value and then try to match it to the best of our ability to make it on our palette because this palette's a little more saturated on this one than mine is a mine is still kind of grayish as it were but we can still make this work so of course the hue is going to be red we bring in the red let's start at about 50 percent right here and then we notice that in context it's pretty light and that his shadows are more of the green the darker green which is still unsaturated but um but still so we can do this let's bring this up and then let's bring this over here so if i were to look at this let's saturate it a little bit more i would say something close to right here would be it so if we were to go something like that yeah. Um, at first, let's do chalk. Where's my chalk brush? Chalk. Let's go ahead, put in some of these strokes. Sort of this sort of thing. And we can actually keep these uh, outside strokes a little. Um, little kind of chalky and then you notice we're gonna use this get the same color the same value of green we're gonna desaturate it a little actually let me bring it to it. we're gonna desaturate it a little and then darken it just a little bit actually we're gonna desaturate it and darken it a little more you see that's a little too Christmassy but that just means we're going to bring this darkness way down. Look at that. That's a little much. So if we bring that up. And then hopefully what the illusion is. We're going to have this. Let's darken it. Saturate it a little bit. Some more of this down here. Then we're going to select that same red color and come over the top again. And then we're actually going to lighten this, desaturate it. Make the brush smaller for each one of these little deals. And all 
the stuff that we think would catch light. You know what I mean? Be right here. And then as you kind of zoom out, you know, now you have like a, a bed of flowers or something. Um, and of course, his values are way darker than mine are. But you have to remember, our darkest values are going to be these blades of grass right here. Um, yeah, we have something like this. Not bad. Not bad. It, it's, a, it's a fun little project so far, you know? It's bringing about some fun, but I hope this has been a pretty cool look at how to use some custom brushes. Now, like I said, you can make entire paintings with hard round brushes. Um, I have in the past. Um, it's not my favorite thing to do, but it's a good exercise. But I think that using custom brushes is a lot of fun because it gives your art a little more variety. You know, we do that. Let's darken it a little more. Yeah, once again, just a little. They don't even have to be super realistic shapes. Um, this is where I would definitely get a reference for trees and just try to mimic the, the stuff to the best of my ability on there. But just getting in some basic shapes like that and see how we did that with the chalk brush earlier. So there's different ways you can approach stuff. It's all just a depending on what your preferred look is. And I think there's there's definitely something to it. Um, build that visual library up and then you can kind of work strictly from imagination that way. So something like that. And let's see if we zoom out. Yeah, those are looking like trees. <laughs> you know, good enough. I guess. Uh, but yeah, hope you had fun on this one. Uh, let me let me go ahead and save what we got here. Save. Let me bring that up. So yeah, hope you like what we had for you today. Let me do that. That way my big old mug's not in the way. Um, I'm going to keep working on this one. I am going to um, put up the final um, here at the very, very end with some of the music. And then, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, feel free to go download the free brush pack if you want to support me, spend some money on a brush pack. I'll be more than happy to help you with some of the settings and things like that. But um, yeah, that's it for me this time. Let me come back over here. Boom. And uh, thank you all so much for hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. Um, what did you think of this longer form video? Do you like more of the real time discussion, talking, or do you appreciate the more focused um, like topic that we would cover plus time lapse? So once again, um, I'd like to make videos that you all would want to see to be invested in, uh, but also that we can just talk about either in the Discord or in the comments or whatever. Um, that's definitely a goal of mine. But without further ado, that's it for me. Um, have a great night. I'm still trying to stay a little quiet. <laughs> the poor, poor baby boy. He's a, uh, yeah. He's a mess. We have that four month sleep regression and it's real. Oh, it's real. I love him to death though. But uh, yeah, we'll see you very, very soon next time. Peace.